All right, Michael Van Runkel here for HotCars.com. I'm in another Polaris slingshot. It's the same blue and orange pod racer style thing, but this one is a whole different ball game because this is the stick shift slingshot. With the slingshot's crazy high revving engine, having a stick shift and a clutch pedal makes all the difference in the world as the Big Lebowski would say, it really ties the whole package together. I wanna to walk you through some of the details that really shine for the slingshot with a stick shift, but for now, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It makes a huge difference for us. The manual transmission saves about 14 pounds compared to the automatic, which makes the automatic pretty impressive, even though it kind of stinks at shifting. Polaris loaned me another slingshot because I was so down on the automatic that the previous one came equipped with. The manual makes a huge difference. It really changes the whole driving experience of the slingshot. This shifter actually feels pretty good. I'd say the closest comparable I've driven would be uh, probably like a 2017 Golf R. It's nice and tight, not long throws, not too wide, but it is a little bit on the light end. The shifter does appear to have a reverse blockout system so that you have to put it in neutral and then go to reverse. And that way people who are accustomed to a six speed like me won't accidentally pop it into reverse in the middle of the freeway and blow out their transmission. That's a good idea guys, especially in the modern age when six speeds are pretty much the norm and seven speeds are the desirable thing from performance cars like Corvettes and Porsches. Speaking of which, I hunted down this Porsche in the Slingshot, no problem. Once again, Polaris has loaned me the Slingshot R, which is the maxed out power with 203 horsepower and 144 pound-feet of torque. That's going through a five-speed stick shift, which is the same five-speed Ison unit used in the automatic. The thing is, in town, you're mostly gonna be in third. On the highway, in fifth, you're at 3,500 RPM just going 75 miles an hour. It could really use that six gear for sort of a freeway flyer, but then again, driving this thing on the freeway is basically miserable. Sure, a six speed would be better, but Polaris is all about saving weight, and this slingshot weighs about 1,600 pounds with those 203 horsepower. Now, a base slingshot would have 178 horsepower and 120 pound-feet of torque. You know, with the ridiculous amount of power to traction limit given the single rear drive wheel, that would probably suffice, but I'm having fun up in the hills, blasting around, hitting the 8,500 RPM red line with the stick shift and learning to really nail my shifts as best I can. Let's go through some of the little things that I would probably change if I was Polaris, but overall, I'm a lot happier with this model than I was with the automatic transmission, even though it did have those nifty paddle shifters. Now the clutch pedal and pedal box definitely feels shrunken now that there is a third pedal down there. And there's an unfortunate like one third of a dead pedal to rest your foot on, but it's behind the clutch. So if you're actually gonna use that, you're flipping back and forth. And I just sort of keep my foot to the side the pedals themselves are a little slippery. I don't have the most grip on my shoes in the world, but I have slipped off the brake pedal while trying to heel toe a little. And part of that is because Polaris has done the top hinging accelerator pedal rather than a floor hinging, which would make heel towing a lot easier. Still, I've gotten pretty good at shifting up and shifting down in the slingshot, and the clutch travel is pretty good. It really catches about halfway up. I'd like it to be at about a third but I've only ground the gears once, so for me, that's a pretty good achievement. The shift knob is a little loose on the shifter lever, and there are some general fit and finish issues. There's some scrapes on <laughs> this little plastic piece, even though this is basically a brand new car that they're loaning me. Having the stick shift does make the ergonomics of the slingshot stand out a little too. They've added this little carrying cubby case thing here, but when I'm shifting, or when I'm turning around, I tend to bump my elbow into it. This, the shifter is also a little bit far back. I would prefer it to be a little closer, more in line with the, the back of the steering wheel than the front of it. 
but that's just my preference and it's something you probably get used to. Now, operating the e-brake with this thing here is basically impossible without bumping into it and I don't like that at all. Also, we've got these little things, but they're useless and really storage is not a pro for the slingshot at all. They've got cubbies behind the seats for your helmets and I've got literally a helmet made by Polaris and it barely fits in there. It came with a carrying case and with a carrying case on, it doesn't fit at all. At least on this slingshot, the rear view mirrors go out a little further and limit the sort of blind spot problems that come with wearing a helmet here in California. I went over that ad nauseum in my previous video, but the blind spots in this thing are really bad, especially in the helmet. So having mirrors that actually work in a backup camera really makes a big difference. One serious consideration for the slingshot would be the brakes. They are just not powerful enough given how much power this thing is putting out. I'm curious whether there are big brake kit upgrades for this model. I'm assuming Slingshot gets the brakes from someone and the wheels are pretty big so there should be enough space for larger rotors and beefier calipers. That would make a big difference going down the hill, although that's a little riskier and I usually try to go full speed coming up the hill. is impressive even with the weight distribution being so heavy towards the front end it really pushes you to learn how to drive something that's completely unlike anything you've ever driven before yeah you're burning rubber a lot yeah you're learning how to drive with a stick shift if you get the stick shift and anyone who's in it for the performance potential should get the stick shift my advice for anyone who wants a slingshot to drive fast and doesn't know how to drive stick shift buy one with a stick shift and learn how to drive in the slingshot. Or if you're spending at least 20 grand on a, basically a toy, why don't you just go out and get a Honda Civic and drive it until you fry the clutch and then go get your slingshot and you probably won't have to worry about killing it quite as quickly. All in all, canyon carving here in the hills is a lot more fun with a manual slingshot. I just wish I was a better driver and had a little bit more experience with full on drifting because once again, even with the traction control activated, I'm burning out in second and third gear if I really floor it. That's a lot of fun. It's a little nerve wracking given that there could be cyclists and cars around. I even saw a deer in the road and really <laughs> that made me nervous given how little protection I think I have even while wearing the helmet. I let the deer get off and then I floored it and that acceleration in second going up the hill is pretty impressive. Frying the clutch in this thing is one of my biggest concerns. I'm wondering if the clutch is really catching it about halfway up because if they loan this to someone before me, it's got a couple hundred miles on the clock, maybe they were doing burnouts as much as I am. I have to guess that if I own this thing, I'd need a new clutch every 5,000 miles. Either way, it's really good practice to have something that's got a little bit more power than it does traction, like the old saying goes. And I'm enjoying myself as I learn how to drive the stick shift a lot better. As the traffic starts to pick up here on Ensignal, that's it for now. I'm gonna make another video about tuning and modding potential for the slingshot. Can you get big brakes? Can you put more power? Can you upgrade the rear wheel so it's even wider? These are questions I'm gonna ask Polaris and I'm gonna try and research through aftermarket channels to see what's available. In the meantime, once again, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Thanks for watching.